And good morning and welcome to the Chambers Amp Up on this beautiful morning. We survived the snowstorm and you're going to survive a great show that we have coming up. We are streaming live from a D Films in picturesque downtown Rock Island. We want to thank you for joining us. It's great to be here as we kick off the 2021 season. So we're so happy you're joining us this morning. We got a great program with some great speakers and Paul Rumler. Uh, we have a, a program that's going to be updating, of course, the uh, important community asset, a chance for you to also win prizes and an opportunity to connect with other chamber members. We're going to do something a little bit new, as a matter of fact. So stay on your speaker viewer for your best experience and you want to have a good experience today, as a matter of fact. We got uh, Ben Leichner, who's the executive director of the Quad City International Airport. He'll give us an inside look of what's going on and the impact COVID-19 has had on air travel and how the airport has responded, as well as the work being done to restore air service. I have gone on like three flights in the last six months, and I'll tell you the truth, I left from the Quad City Airport. They got it all figured out. There's distancing. It was a quick flight, and it actually was cheaper than the other flights that I had, uh, had looked at. So we're going to talk about the airport and how 2021 is going to be so much better than 2020 and that you are safe to travel in the air once again. And back by popular demand is networking later in the show. We hadn't done that in a while, of course, because we are streaming, and it's very hard to network when you're not here. But we found a way to do that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Going to give you a chance to meet up with some familiar faces. Also get to meet some new folks who are all part of your Quad Cities Chamber. Before we start our program, let's get a huge thank you to our sponsors, of course, who have made today's event possible. As the Chamber continues to host virtual events, it's because of sponsors that we are able to do this free of charge. So we want to thank our annual sponsors who are Warner Restoration Services, Mediacom Business, and our good friends at WQUD-FM 107.7 Vintage Radio. See, I used to do radio, so that's why. Our monthly sponsor is GS Labs. Great friends to have. And our prize sponsor is Locals Love Us. They have some great prizes that we'll be giving out uh, throughout the morning. Amp Up is also powered by D Films. So let's see a message from our annual sponsor, Warner Restoration Services. And when we come back, we get to hear from the one, the only, Paul Rumler, the president and chief executive officer of the Quad Cities Chamber. Hey, Quad City Chamber, it's Brent Warner, president of Warner Restoration Services. On behalf of the Warner team, uh, we're very excited uh, to be a part of today's uh, Chamber event. Uh, we've been a part of the Quad City Chamber of Commerce for a long time and uh, really believe in the overall mission of the Quad City Chamber and really thank and appreciate everybody at the Chamber for everything that's done on a regional and national basis to fight for us. Um, we uh, certainly hope that everybody enjoyed a Merry Christmas and a, and a Happy New Year. I'm sure we're all pretty excited to get 2020 behind us and are energetic and looking very much forward to a much more prosperous and normal 2021. Uh, very excited to see um, in the hospitality world on the Illinois side of the river moving to a tier one. So we're praying for all of you uh, hospitality owners and workers. Uh, get your feet back underneath you um, and all of those sorts of things. But to wrap things up, uh, hopefully you uh, don't need us. Uh, but if you do, of course, remember, we specialize in fire, water and storm damage repair on commercial and residential structures. So have a great day and uh, God bless. All right, welcome back. Thank you, Warner Restoration, for your monthly uh, or annual sponsorship of our AMP Up. I'm Paul Rumler, CEO for the Quad Cities Chamber. And I always want to give a special shout out to Jim Mertens. He does a great job. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, rate him your number one favorite anchor on Locals Love Us. We need to make sure that he is recognized for the great work that he's been doing us for at least 30 years here for the Quad Cities Chamber. Uh, I'm very thankful this year to start off 2021 on a, on a really high note. Uh, our members uh, have been sticking with us. Our sponsors have been sticking with us. Our staff has been doing an amazing job. Much like uh, in your companies, you don't uh, get much done with, in, without a great team. And, and at the Quad Cities Chamber, we're extremely proud of our team and all of our partners. Uh, starting off the year, we have some great news uh, with more uh, restaurants and retail being able to open up in, in Illinois. This is a good, uh, good path direction uh, for us. The vaccine rollout is underway. Uh, really thankful for the Rock Island and Scott County Health Departments that are leading us in that. Watch your Chamber E! News for all the up-to-date uh, information as to how you can get your employees vaccinated uh, in Phase 1B that's starting here shortly. Uh, we all asked you to step up and help keep it QC. Uh, in 2020. Uh, this is all about uh, talking about how you uh, do business locally and support our, our local establishments. You really came uh, forward and uh, the Keep It QC uh, credit card was extremely popular. It had an, a $180,000 economic impact here in the Quad City. So $180,000 worth of gift cards were purchased and that's now circulating in our economy. So thank you very much for helping our Quad Cities out. 
Uh, this year is all about recovery. How do we at the Quad Cities Chamber help you and work with all of our partners to make sure that your businesses are successful and that our livelihoods are back to where we'd like them to be? Uh, we're focused on our legislative asks uh, in Illinois and Iowa. Iowa is at full steam right now. They've been back in session for a couple weeks. We're talking about uh, COVID recovery, making sure that the mitigations that might have been loosened a little bit last year, that some of them actually make sense and they should be, become permanent. Uh, same thing in Illinois. Uh, tax policy remains important, uh, making sure that we have a competitive economic in environment, that as we recruit companies to the Quad Cities, that we have the, the incentives and the policies in place. As a region, we have some really big opportunities. We've talked about riverfront development. We've talked about investing in education or transportation. We're still pushing for a regional funding mechanism that we can bring our two states together here in the region to talk about ways that we can transform our area with some major, major investments. Uh, of course, workforce development is top of mind for every employer. Uh, as I said, our, your team is the most important asset that you have, and we're looking for ways that we can help you get access to training and more skilled workers. In particular, child care services uh, over the past uh, year has become a, an even more uh, important priority, as has broadband, internet connectivity. Um, and, and then finally, pre-K uh, and, and just how do we support those services that are underpinning of our economy? Think about those health and human service agencies that are really stepping up over the last year to help our community. We need to make sure that they have what they need to be successful. If you're interested in learning more about this or engaging in the conversation, we have a legislative series that kicks off on Friday with Senator Knoyer from Iowa and Representative McCombie. So sign up for that one. Uh, looking at our uh, economic development pipeline, we're very optimistic for the upcoming year. Uh, we've had about 20 plus uh, new projects in the last few months. We've been seeing activity in manufacturing, logistics and distribution, and then office uh, as well. So we hope to have some new uh, announcements in the, in the coming days and weeks. Uh, we are really excited to, to tell our Quad Cities story. Uh, the Quad Cities Chamber has partnered with Visit Quad Cities to do an, a new brand exercise where we want to be able to tell the authentic Quad Citizen story from our perspective and yours. So we'd love it if you would take your survey that we put out in our emails, is on our website. Tell us what you love about the Quad Cities so that way we can tell others uh, and then they can join us here in our lovely community. We are proud to partner with the Quad City International Airport. Uh, talk about a, a major asset to our community. Ben Leishner and his team have been doing a great job over the last year, but over the last uh, many decades of their existence, we've had a really strong partnership uh, between the business community and the airport. We have an air service committee in which we help provide some guidance and feedback and then assistance to the airport as they plan uh, their future. So we're really excited to see uh, Ben's vision for the future and what the airport will be bringing to us uh, this year. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce our monthly sponsor, GS Labs. Thanks for your sponsorship. As the spread of COVID-19 continues, our country, state, and communities are in need of additional rapid testing so that individuals understand their health status and can make informed decisions to protect themselves and others. GS Labs is working to grow its testing program to provide more rapid COVID testing availability to meet this demand. As the demand for rapid testing continues to increase, GS Labs is working to provide available tests in more communities throughout the country that do not have access to this type of testing. We provide high quality testing options and want to be sure that as many people have access to this option as we can to keep communities at work, school, and with their families. Our solution of easily accessible rapid testing allows you to keep some degree of normalcy if you have been impacted by possible exposure. GS Lab strives to be well above the industry standard by providing expert staff at each location who will administer tests as well as answer patient questions over the phone and provide proper and timely local and state reporting. Not only do we want to provide you with a knowledgeable and trustworthy staff, but we are reinvesting into your community by hiring individuals who have been directly impacted by this pandemic and offering competitive wages to help get them back on their feet. Please know we are taking every necessary step for you and our community members to receive the best care possible. GS Labs is operating in accordance with the CARES Act to ensure no balance billing cost sharing for insured patients. Our resources are provided in accordance with the CARES Act to help increase testing across the country. GS Labs testing facilities are located across the country. Book your appointment with us today. 
And we want to thank uh, GS Labs for sponsoring us today. We appreciate all that they're doing to help the community through this pandemic. Every day, a challenge. They're doing a fantastic job. And now it's uh, time to really uh, congratulate and welcome some of the newest members of the chamber in the Quad Cities. Talk about people doing a fantastic job. Uh, today, we're excited to announce 15 new members. So take a look at your screen and all of these great businesses that you can see right now. As a new member of the chamber, we invite you to take advantage of all the resources available to you and get connected to other businesses in our region. Always check out the Chamber website for exciting new developments and all the opportunities that can make this an even better experience for you. Make sure to stick around also at the end of our program for an opportunity to meet our new members who are joining us today. And as Chamber members, we know it's always great to support other Chamber members, and I hope you'll find some time to say hi, do some business with these businesses. So we do appreciate that. Just one more way that you can keep it QC. Now, we also know that everybody loves prizes, and today everyone has an opp opportunity to win one. We have automatically entered all of your names and carefully put them on slips of paper. We're doing something new. I will announce the winner and you will have 15 seconds to get here. Here to D Films in downtown Rock Island. 15 seconds seem to be enough time. If you don't get here in time, I get to keep your prize. So it's a great... No? No. The Chamber team will mail the prizes directly to our winners. All right, so it's that easy. So the prizes are provided by Locals Love Us, our annual prize sponsor, and... This is what we got first. This is beautiful. Beautifully wrapped. We have gift cards back here and this beautiful mug. It's a Locals Love Us RTIC mug. And as you know, an RTIC mug is a special mug. Uh, locals Love Us Beanie is in here, a $10 gift certificate to Awake Coffee and a $10 gift certificate to Cody Road Coffee. And the winner is Paul, no. The winner is Mary Carson from the Quad City Chamber. Mary, congratulations. You are the winner of that. We also have one more prize from our annual sponsor, MediaCom Business. It is, this is a replica. This isn't the actual Home Medics UV clean phone sanitizer. It is a cool portable little gadget. It is a germ sanitizer and UVC light that can be used on cell phones, credit cards, keys, glasses, perhaps your children, whatever you want to use it for to make them just that much more clean. And the winner is, Jen's looking at me going, he's going off script. Sarah Dirks with Mid-American Basement Systems. So Sarah, congratulations, you get the Home Medics UV Clean Phone Sanitizer. And that's due to Mediacom Business being our sponsor, so we appreciate them. We appreciate you as well. Uh, we want to give a special shout out to our annual music sponsor, which is WQUD 107.7 FM Vintage Radio. So let's see what's going on with them today. Seven, your live and local station. And we now get to introduce Ben Leichner, who's the executive director of the uh, Quad City International Airport. He joined the airport as executive director in 2018. Nearly three years at the helm, he's created an ambitious roadmap to improve pasture experience through adding amenities and embarking on a major terminal upgrade, as well as new uh, organizations focus on infrastructure accountability and taking more prominent role in the economic engine for the Quad City region. You're going to see some amazing new things at the airport, not only construction, but the way people are treating you. I mean, it's, it's just a great experience out there because they understand that you might be a little nervous about flying and they make it so much easier down there at the airport. Uh, ben earned a bachelor's degree in aviation management and flight operations from Florida Institute of Technology, a master's of public administration administration from the University of Nebraska. He's an accredited airport executive from the American Association of Airport Executives and is a commercial instrument pilot, which means I believe he can play the flute at 10,000 feet. What we'll find out right now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Ben. 
Thank you, Jim. And thank you to Paul and the Chamber team for inviting me on this morning. Also, thank you for, uh, to you for joining me virtually this morning. It's my honor to be here to talk about what's been going on at the airport for this past year. It's been a, a very unique year, well, but uh, we're very excited about what we're looking forward to uh, this, this coming year. Um, obviously, we're going to cover some of the COVID-19 impact and how we've responded to that. Uh, we'll talk about some of the exciting improvements that are on the horizon um, and hopefully get some community support and excitement out there about the buzz of what things are looking like. But there's going to be a little bit of interaction during this presentation, so polls will pop up on your screen throughout the presentation. And then also we'll have a chance for some Q&A. So if any questions pop up or if anything piques your interest, you, you have a question on, feel free to send that along. And I think uh, Jim will provide a Q&A afterward. So 2020, what happened? Like many of your businesses, uh, the airport was greatly impacted by the COVID-19 impact uh, or uh, pandemic. Uh, the year started off really, really strong. In fact, both January and February were record months for the airport. Uh, we started to hear buzz early, probably around January into February about this pandemic in, in China and some of the impacts and some of the legislative things were popping up. It was certainly out there, but not something that was a prime focus. It wasn't until probably early March, I was uh, in Washington, D.C. at a legislative affairs conference, and we had some guest speakers from Congress there, and the only thing that they could talk about, and or they wanted to talk about, was this scary virus that was on the horizon, and what they were learning about the impacts, uh, uh, possible impacts to the U.S. And so ultimately, we realized that we, the, the market bottomed out, everybody's stay-at-home orders came out, and uh, it, it was quarantine time for the country, and we realized that mostly in April, where 95% decrease in passenger activity. So what that equates to is uh, April 2019, we welcomed over 60,000 guests through our door. Um, and April of 2020, it was less than 3,000 total passengers for the month. Um, luckily, we did start to see some recovery. So we, we started to get a positive trajectory um, going through the summer where we were every month. We were doubling the number of passengers we were welcoming through our doors, but certainly it gave us a chance to take pause and uh, think about what the impact of that was gonna be on our financial resources, as well as what the future travel experience is gonna look like. Um, on your screens, you should be able to see a graph that, that is provided. And what, what the graph is, over the last five years, we track monthly passenger activity at the airport, similar to what you see nationally with TSA throughput or uh, total employments for, for air carriers in the United States, we track at a local level. Uh, obviously, green is, is 2020. You can see where in March it started to drop down. That was halfway through uh, the, the year. And then April is where we hit the rock bottom. And April uh, really gave us a chance to think about, I mean, with only 3,000 passengers coming through the doors, we had a chance to really focus on uh, what was going on and that just wasn't much other than we had a workforce of, of several hundred people coming to the airport every day uh, preparing the facilities for the gateway to the community um, and that was kind of our, our goal was to focus on them so going to the the next point is uh, financial impact I think I've, I've spoke to most of the community about how the airport works we're, we're an airport authority that we get our uh, our authority through state legislation, the Airport Authorities Act. So we're not a city, a municipality, we're not a county, um, we're not a state agency. We're our own unique form, special district of government in the state. We are a revenue-based authority, so we're one of the few forms of government where we have a federal obligation to be as self-sustaining as possible. And that means we follow and track our revenues very closely. A majority of our revenues are derived from passenger activity uh, or or airline activity, whether it's uh, tenants uh, from leases or licenses. Um, a very small portion comes from one thing that's somewhat unique to the airport in the, in the Midwest is we do have a tax base. Uh, it's a very small amount of what the revenue coming into the airport is, and that's something that we uh, protect. We actually are one of the few agencies in the state that has existing taxing capacity because we like to rely on user fees and uh, charge people who use the facility versus just charging our neighbors to uh, prop us up. So obviously with such a decrease in passenger activity uh, in 2020, it was, it was going to be an impact to finances. Luckily, Congress identified this and acted quickly. They enacted the CARES Act, which actually included about $10 billion of economic support for airports. They uh, put these grants out where they were available for airports to use for any legal and lawful purpose. 
Of that $10 billion, Moline received um, just over $8 million of, of federal support. What's interesting is even though Congress passed this in late April, we actually weren't able to see any of that emergency money until late September. And that's because of the way uh, the state legislation works in Illinois is that money gets channeled through uh, the Department of Transportation. So we have a lot of other bureaucratic red tape we have to jump through to be able to get that money. And something that we're, we're focusing on and the Chamber's uh, been helping us partner on some of the legislative affairs of making sure that when federally we get awarded money to the community, we can get it out to the community in a timely fashion because that's really important. The economic impact of the airport is analyzed about every five to 10 years uh, by the DOT. Right now, our, our economic output is just over $500 million a year of value to the Quad Cities. So that includes direct, indirect, and induced impact on the community through air service, payroll, and some of the large uh, employers that have flight departments uh, located in the Quad Cities. In addition to the $10 billion enacted through CARES for the airport, there was about $32 billion awarded to airlines. Um, and that was clearly, it was, it was in the news quite a bit about people not traveling, the impact on air service and how that's so important for global economy and global commerce. Um, of that 32 billion, $3 billion was authorized for airline contractors. One thing that's somewhat unique about the Quad City Airport is we have our own limited liability corporation that provides airline handling. So when you uh, board an Allegiant flight, those are actually airport employees that are doing uh, the, the service. We also do all of the fueling for the commercial air carriers and we do uh, wheelchair service and customer service in the terminal. So of that $3 billion enacted to contractors, we were able to secure a PPP payroll support grant uh, equivalent to about four months of uh, payroll, which was about $300,000. So that was a huge help. Our goal was to, again, to focus on our workforce, but to make sure that when airlines were ready to travel again, once the community was tr ready to travel again, that we were there to, to serve uh, the community. Uh, the, the most recent uh, level of federal funding, which was enacted in late uh, December, I think it was December 21st by uh, President Trump, was the CRISA funds, the Coronavirus Response Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act. And that included about $2 billion for airports. Um, the FAA has yet to uh, get uh, a funding award out for that, but we're anticipating in total about $150 million for Illinois airports and about a million to, to 1.2 million coming to the Quad City International Airport. So obviously, there's a lot of different areas uh, that we, we derive our, our finances. And I would point out that for the year tw in 2020, we ended up uh, being down about 58% in activity year over year. But through some of our, our board's swift action over the last two years, we were able to diversify our revenue. So the overall impact has only been about a 35% reduction in revenue. And that's because we're able to focus on things like commercial development um, and other, other things other than just passenger activity. So talking a little bit about our actual airport response, you know, when things got really quiet in April into the summer, we uh, had a chance to take stock and think about what the future was going to look like. We focused specifically first on our employees, our workforce. So we had the airport itself employs about 100 employees. But if you add in TSA, airlines, rental car companies, it quickly gets up into the several hundreds. And these were people that were coming to work every day, uh, kind of concerned because it was empty, was, was a little bit eerie. Um, but we wanted to focus on those employees to make sure that they felt comfortable coming to work with this very scary virus. And there was just a lot of information that was still coming out. Since that time, a lot of studies have come out really specifically analyzing uh, air travel and how it's actually, in of itself, air travel is safer than most activities. You think uh, it's a little bit scary being in a metal tube with 50 to 150 other people, but you're in this metal tube that's a very high rate of exchange of air um, and it's fresh air that's going through HEPA filtration, coming off a turbine engine that's heated to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, cooled to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and then circulated into the cabin. So it's actually safer than most activities. Um, we focused on our, our employees feeling comfortable. We started to focus on what the future experience would look like. Um, one of the other big things is we took the opportunity to, suddenly we had a, an empty canvas or terminal, if you will. So we started to focus on things that we couldn't do typically when we're really busy. So we went out and we did some repairs in the parking lot that were a huge challenge going up to uh, this pandemic of how are we gonna move all these cars and make these repairs? Obviously a safety thing if there's trip hazards when you're coming, uh, walking into the terminal. Well, during the pandemic in the summer, it was no issue. It was largely vacant. I think we got down to maybe 40 or 50 cars in all of our parking lot, which gave us the opportunity to really focus on that.
So travel, travel safety, and I talked about a little bit of focusing on the future of travel. Uh, we knew travel was gonna come back. We didn't know at the time what it was gonna look like as far as how quick we were gonna recover, if it was going to be uh, just a complete floodgates open, everybody's back for the summer. Obviously, that's what we hope for. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, there's two, two, two schools of thought that, hey, this was gonna decimate the industry for the long term, uh, and there is gonna be no recovery. The other school of thought was, no, it's gonna, we're gonna bounce off it. It's not as bad as, as, as you think, and, and we'll be back to full flow by late summer. Uh, we ended up likely somewhere, I'd say, in the middle. But uh, one of the big things is, as you come to the airport, hopefully people will come back to travel. Travel restrictions are lifting. There's been a lot of effort and, and energy put into analyzing how safe travel is. But the one big thing that uh, I think the, the riskiest part of air travel is the experience getting to and from your aircraft. So it's the transition through the airport. It's public transportation to the airport. Those are the bigger risk factors. And that also gave us a really good opportunity to leverage what we had. So we have a smaller terminal that has plenty of space for people to spread out. And as you come to the airport, you're gonna to start to see these marks of the new, the new travel era. It's gonna include plexiglass sneeze guards. So when you have interface with, with uh, airline personnel, it's through a clear barrier to, to protect them as well as you. It includes social distancing cues where on the floor there's decals, seating is blocked, and that's just to help encourage people to spread out and, in, and take you know, advantage of the space that we have in the, in the terminal. There's also hand sanitizer stations as you go through the whole process. If there are touch points, which we're doing as much as we can to eliminate touch points and go uh, motionless, so fixtures in the restrooms are touchless, things like that, but we do have hand sanitizer stations throughout. Um, another big piece was really signage and announcements. So a lot of people have come really used to the announcements when they come through the terminal. After 9-11, we have the safety and security announcements that play every three minutes. Well, now you'll notice that there's just gentle reminders of, hey, masks are required when you come through the airport. Masks are made free at every door, so when you come in, if you don't have your mask, if you leave it in the car, you don't have to run back out. They're right there, they're handy, and they're available. Um, and one of the other pieces that we really focused on was uh, through our custodial and janitorial staff on increased, increased cleaning. Um, that's something I'm very proud of that historically we've always been really well known for having clean facilities. And this is something where now being clean is synonymous with being safe. So that's a, a really important uh, point. So at this point, I wanted to introduce you to our, our newest campaign, which is the We Go QC uh, campaign with a, with a one minute uh, media spot. Sure. Some people like big airports, but we're just not that type. Social distancing, we've been doing something like it for years, but we took it to the next level with floor decals to mark proper social distance, plexiglass barriers, blocked terminal seating, and plenty of room to sit down and grab a bite. Face coverings are otherwise required. Clean terminals? You bet. We use electrostatic disinfecting sprayers and we frequently sanitize touch points and restrooms. You'll also find hand sanitizing stations throughout the airport. That arrive more than two hours before your flight rule? Not necessary here. We're all about less crowds and less hassle. At the Quad City International Airport, we think being your hometown choice is our biggest asset. That's why we go QC. To learn more about our COVID-19 response, go to qcairport.com slash COVID. Well, as you can see from the video, uh, it, it certainly is a different experience if you, uh, when you come back to the airport and travel, we also believe it's, a, it's very much a safer experience. Uh, later, or earlier this, uh, this year, we actually did a survey to some businesses uh, through the chamber and one of the survey results that we, uh, again, I mentioned earlier about having a clean facility, 96% of our survey respondents described the airport as clean. And again, that's such an important point when clean now directly translates to safety. And that's something we, we pride ourselves in um, with not a super busy facility. We're not um, Chicago, we're not San Francisco, we're not New York where we have these high exchange of, of people walking through our doors. We're able to put the extra special care into cleaning and maintaining our facilities. So we launched this We Go QC campaign uh, this past summer. We did it in partnership with Mindfire uh, Communications, who's been working with us on a lot of our campaign when it comes to education and also um, 
It's educating people about what we're doing as the airport, uh, but it's also encouragement. We, we want to encourage people uh, that it is a safe practice to come back to the airport when you have the opportunity uh, to travel again. It's something that uh, we want people to recognize the benefits and value of coming through a small airport. We want to be your hometown airport. We want people to feel comfortable coming through our doors. And the benefits of that is a smaller facility, but also uh, you're working with local staff. I mean, a lot of the people that work at the airport are, are your friends and neighbors. Um, so it's kind of a home, home felt environment. The other benefits of the airport is, you know, we're not the big airport, so we don't have these huge queues of people. Again, that's typically going to be the uh, highest risk portion of travel is if you're in a long queue going through TSA or screening uh, on a shuttle bus getting to uh, satellite parking to your facility. Um, we don't have that. We, we have sp space to spread out and just a better overall experience. So recovery. So the airport's role in recovery through COVID-19 is something we've been, since day one, we started to focus on what the travel experience was going to be like um, after uh, the people feel comfortable traveling again. But as part of that, we engaged uh, some experts in the industry. We, we engaged Campbell Hill Aviation Group out of uh, Washington, D.C. area, who provides analytic work for the airlines as well as airports. Um, and that's because a lot of the decisions airlines make are driven by data. They look at what passenger bookings are doing, and they're looking at uh, what opportunities are out there um, for, for communities that don't have service, what service would make, make sense. And so as we started to work with Campbell Hill, we put data together and we started to build a narrative for the community. And that's where we come in together with partnership uh, with the chamber and our air service committee, but also organizations like Visit Quad Cities and Dave Harrell and his team, which is such an important cheerleader for tourism in our community. Again, there's one big sector when it's business travel, getting the businesses out of our community, but also we're the gateway in many times for, for tourists coming to our community. So really appreciate the partnership with the, the Air Service Committee. And again, that's a sounding board with community leaders and business leaders um, that give us valuable feedback on what we should be focusing on uh, working with Campbell Hill Aviation Group. So our next steps to recovery, and I think most of the people saw this, have seen this in the news, that traditionally we have 11 nonstop routes in and out of Quad Cities. Uh, early on in the pandemic, we lost, uh, saw three of those routes suspended, and that was United with Denver service, Delta with Minneapolis and Detroit service. And those were all responses by the airlines. Each airline had a unique response to how they were gonna handle the, the decreased demand system-wide in the United States. Um, but they also had limitations with, with aircraft, with pilots, flight crew, and staff to, to support those flights. Um, and so one of our big focuses was restoration of that service. It was always going into this, it was always new service, new city pairs. What, you know, where do business travelers and leisure travelers want to go that we don't have nonstop service to today? And so we started to actually focus on restoration of those service. Um, your role, the quickest pathway to recovery in this is to fly local. I mentioned our, our role as the hometown airport. Some of that is to have the hometown pride and support. Um, similar to what the, the chamber preaches is buy local. It's very similar, it's fly local. Um, and that's the quickest way. The be better we can do at filling our existing service today will lead to new suit, uh, service tomorrow. So current status, I mentioned we had three, three routes that were suspended uh, early on due to the pandemic. Um, I'm very excited to say that United has announced uh, returning on February 11th will be double uh, two flights a day to Denver, which is very important westbound service for the business community because of the on, onboard uh, or the onward connections. But also, Denver is a fantastic vacation location, especially in, uh, with the spring into summer with all the outdoor activity. That's one thing of the 2020 and the pandemic, people have come to out embrace the outdoors. Certainly a strength that Quad Cities has uh, being the confluence of the, the Rock River and uh, Mississippi River. Uh, we are, we're, we're talking to Delta almost weekly about uh, their plans with Minneapolis service and Detroit service. Luckily, going into this, all of the routes uh, serving the airport were successful in uh, making a, a profit for the airlines. So we are optimistic, and uh, it sounds like Delta has is, is got a, a roadmap out there for some time before this summer to bring Minneapolis and Detroit back. And again, that's something for those to be successful. It's going to take community support. And so we'll partner with uh, the Chamber and visit Quad Cities to make sure we get that information out to the community and certainly celebrate uh, those routes when they do return. 
So future projects, this is something that's uh, kind of exciting because we were talking quite a bit uh, prior to 2020, these great plans of things that were to come. And I'm proud to say that nothing was ever canceled because of this. Um, we did press pause on a lot of the projects that were out there, but a lot of the projects we were, we were talking about going into this are still on the horizon. So one of the big ones was a solar energy project uh, that we had announced where we're partnering with an Illinois business to bring about 50% of our energy demand as an airport. Uh, we were sourcing it locally through the, the form of solar. Another side benefit to that is that will bring us covered parking for our short-term parking lot, which is a huge value when you fly out in the winter, you come back and you don't have to uncover or unbury your uh, vehicle from snow, but also in the, in the scorching sun of the, the summer, your car will stay nice and cool. Um, curbside valet and coat check is something we're talking about. In fact, this last February, we had signed an agreement with a, a, a provider to provide that service. When pandemic hit, we decided to pull back on that. There was no sense in providing those service when there's no passengers to serve, but they are queued up, ready to go, so that when travel does return and people are ready to travel again, we will have that valet service and coat check available. Probably the most exciting is, uh, we've talked about a little bit, is the terminal modernization. And uh, as I, I've referenced in the pack, you pull up to the, the curb of the airport, it doesn't exactly feel like the airport. It's a, just a large structure, it might as well be the backside of a school or a Walmart. It just doesn't feel like transportation, doesn't exude the excitement of, uh, of air travel. So it's a facility that's been around since 1985, largely untouched. Um, and we're partnered with a design and architecture firm out of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, that that's their expertise is providing uh, uh, design for airports and transportation facilities around the country. So we've made it partway through our visioning workshops through a very engaging team. A special thanks to Visit Quad Cities and Dave Harrell for kind of being that uh, sounding point within the community representing the tourism aspect of the airport. Um, and the next steps of that is we're developing a sense of place as the airport. Our goal as the airport is to be uh, an authentic representation of the community, but also we wanna be a reflection. We, we wanna have it look and feel like when you come to the Quad Cities, the, that airport is part of that. Um, one of the unique opportunities around this is timing. The pandemic has certainly changed uh, travel, I think, into the in a very long future. And so one of the pieces that we're, we're trying to embrace now is the thought of bringing the outdoors inside. So how, how that will look, I, I don't know, whether it's uh, including some kind of atrium or uh, water feature in the terminal so that when you come through the facility, you feel more outside. It's a, it's a throwback to the river, um, and it's a recognition that... Um, the Quad Cities is more than just a, a city in the Midwest. It's a, it's a unique location that many people uh, coming to the airport and maybe their first time visiting the community. We don't want that first gateway uh, or the first impression of the community to be one where uh, kind of blah, there's some walls, there's not a lot of excitement. We want it to be exciting. And ideally, if we can find a way to make it be something where it's not necessarily a beacon in the community, but someplace where even people, local, you may not be traveling, but you may want to go to the airport and check it out because it's a large facility, 142,000 square feet of space to spread out. We have a restaurant that stayed open throughout the pandemic. We may not have had a lot of passengers or customers, but under the state uh, executive orders, they were able to stay open um, and they did stay staffed to, to serve the community. And with that, I think we go into some Q&A. Well, Ben, before you leave real quick, just a, a real quick question. You can stay here. I'll, I'll stay far enough away from you. Um, there's a lot of people that are a little worried, you know, because they haven't flown in about a year. What are you telling the traveling public that's been away for like 11 months now? Well, and I think we, you saw it a little bit in, in our media spot with the quick video, is we've put a lot of time and effort into making sure travel is safe. And there's been a lot of expert analysis and study into the actual air portion of it. The, the benefit and value of the small facility is it's, it's safe. If it, if it wasn't safe, we, we wouldn't be having our, our employees come in every day. But also, um, it's a personal decision. It's one of those where we're very optimistic as vaccines roll out. People have this uh, pent up feeling that they wanna get out of the house during quarantine and they may be a little bit antsy to, to book that next vacation. I would say now is a great time, fares are low. So now's a great time to look at booking that next vacation. Airline cancellation fees have been waived largely by a lot of the domestic carriers. So really there's no, no real risk in taking the chance to book uh, air travel when you get a chance. And if you just don't feel comfortable, if we haven't won you over by the time of your trip, you can always cancel and delay. 
But you must feel somewhat relieved when you saw, and, and mind you, uh, you sent out a press release, I think, earlier this week, when you saw kind of a recovery in December um, as far as uh, air travel and passenger uh, embarkments and, and, and disembarkments uh, at the airport. Do you ha obviously, April was the worst. The worst seems to be over. Yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic that the worst is over, and we really bottomed out in April. Every month since April has been a, a trajectory of improvement. So we've been outpacing the national average on a year-over-year -year, uh, decrease. So we ended the year at down 58%. Right. Uh, December was a strong month. Even when we had some of that bad weather toward the end of the, the, end of the year, we had, we had some right. cancellations. We were still seeing positive numbers. And I think I, I was really optimistic going into 2021 that, okay, 2020 is behind us. Yeah. Well, I think the realization is this first quarter of 2021 is gonna be very similar to 2020. We're still digging our way out of this mess. Um, but I would say that it, it, is, it is only gonna get better from here. Ben Leichner, the executive director of the uh, Quad City International Airport, thank you so much. You know, today would not be possible without our friends at D Films who are live streaming this event. So let's see what they're up to there. And we once again want to thank the people at D Films. Here before the crack of dawn, Phil just, just beats these people into submission to come to work, and they do a great job, so we really appreciate that. One of the best parts of uh, Amp Up has always been the chance to meet uh, new members and also some of the familiar faces here at the chamber. It's a chance to uh, also talk about what's uh, going right and what's going wrong as far as your business plan is going and getting some great ideas. It's all called networking. It's so important. Uh, we're going to start our visual or virtual rather, which is also visual, breakout rooms. Now here's how it works. Just stay right where you're at and we're going to automatically send you into breakout rooms you will have about eight to ten minutes, maybe a little less, to network and make some new connections. We'll automatically bring you back into the main room, and then we'll wrap up the program. But it's going to give you a chance to go one-on-one -on -one or three-on-three -three and start to be able to talk about some of the great successes that you've had. By the way, we're also going to be uh, drawing for another cool prize at the end of the program, and in order to win, you still have to be around here to be able to participate. So turn your video cameras on. We're going to unmute everyone and uh, go out there and meet some new people and we'll see you in a little less than 10 minutes. until everybody can uh, rejoin us, of course. And we want to thank, of course, our sponsors, which once again is uh, Vintage Radio 107.7 WQUD. Uh, the Quad City Chamber also is so thankful for Mediacom Business for helping us out, as well as uh, Warner Restoration and the people here at D Films who are making sure that we are uh, being able to stream to you this morning's program. Uh, we hope you did enjoy the uh, networking. It has always been such an important part of the uh, morning chamber breakfast and amp up. It gives you a chance, of course, to meet some of your uh, fellow business people, new people in the community, new businesses that have joined the chamber. So we appreciate uh, the vibrancy that that brings to us. So we want to thank everyone for joining us. And let's continue with the program right now because we have two more giveaways. Uh, Joomers Casino Hotels provided us with two overnight stays at their hotel, plus a $30 food credit and a tumbler. This is what it looks like. Uh, Joomers Casino and Hotel open again with uh, even fewer restrictions. They have extended hours. They have indoor dining and bar service once again. 
Isn't this weird after a pandemic that we're talking about what was normal is now back to normal, and that's what's great news, of course. Uh, if you need meeting space, they say they can now accommodate your group of up to 50 people, so that is good news as well. Uh, bring on the winning and come see why. Readers of the Quad City Times have voted Joomers as the number one casino in the area. Their hotel and Blue Square Cafe open as well. Mask up, play it safe, they say. Visit JoomersCasinoHotel.com to see updated hours and the commitment to keeping you safe. So once again, these are the prizes. I have two of them. Is it, uh, let me double check. It is an overnight stay, two overnight stays, that's what I thought. Two overnight stays at the hotel plus a $30 food credit and the tumbler and Bill Horrell from Alternatives is one of the winners. I'm giving away two, am I not? I believe I'm giving away two, yes. And so the second one is going to Victor Aldridge from Mediacom Business. So congratulations to them. And we want to thank, of course, the people over at Rhythm Cities who are providing this. A great program today. We want to thank Ben and all of the folks. I'm sorry, uh, at Joomers, I should have said. Joomers, of course, is doing this. Uh, and, and you get the tumbler and you get the two-night stay, so we appreciate that. And once again, Joomers has got their restaurants open. Such good news that people get dining inside right now. So once again, Joomers has always been a great host for us, uh, providing this, the indoor dining bar service is going on right now. Uh, we also want to remind you of some upcoming chamber events. The Legislative Events Series kicks off Friday, January 29th at 9 in the morning. You can hear a legislative preview from the uh, Iowa State Senator, Chris Kenoyer, as well as uh, State Representative Tony McCombie, discuss the Chamber's 2021 regional advocacy priorities. If you also enjoyed the chance to uh, catch up with fellow members today and want to make more connections, you can join us for the Business Exchange. That's coming up Wednesday, February 10th at 11 in the morning. You can register right now at quadcitieschamber.com. We want to thank our AMP Up sponsors once again. It's Werner Restoration, Mediacom Business, WQUD FM 107.7 Vintage Radio, GS Labs, Locals Love Us, and D Films. We want to thank Joomers for giving us great prizes and, of course, hosting this in months past. So, once again, thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed the breakout moment, the networking, let the Chamber know. I know it's something that they really want to do in the future, and if it was a success for you, they want to hear from you all the time. And also check out the Chamber's website anytime to find out new programs that are being offered and ways that you can connect with your community and how your community can help you. So for now, thanks for joining us. We hope you had a great time. Get out there and go make some money.